Hey everybody, Rob Cootie here, the MLM Solution. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Today is Monday, June 21st. Can you believe it? My gosh, three quarters of the month is over. We're going to be going into the seventh month of the year pretty soon. That's amazing, simply amazing. And as you know, guys, each and every day, Monday through Friday, we go live at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We ask that you join us today as we take a deep dive into this subject right here, podcast number 202. Can you believe it? The uh, MLM company growth cycles <clears throat> and their impact on your business. Yes, believe it or not, the company's growth cycle has a direct relation to your growth and an impact, good or bad. Well, good and bad, based on what you do. Uh, and you need to know what, how to take advantage of that growth cycle, how to ride that growth cycle, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's Monday, you can tell. And uh, what you need to do if you're a little bit behind the curve. We're going to talk about that and much more in this important episode of the business building process. So join us today, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, as always. And if you don't know, we're always asking you to help us with the algorithm. Help us get the message and these podcasts, our products, our website, etc., out to our fellow network marketers so they, too, can be empowered with this great information so they can do wonderful things with this great business model. You can be a part of that positive process by simply taking a few seconds to share our hashtag. That's hashtag the MLM solution, hashtag the MLM solution. Also, please go to our website, the MLM solution.net, and just take a second or two to hit the share button. Once again, you start that positive process of sharing, and we can help people across the globe that we don't even know by just exposing them to the right information. All right, with that being said, once again, this show, podcast number 202, the MLM company growth cycles and their impact on your business. You do not want to miss this. This is one of those hidden gems that you need to know about. We'll see you very shortly as we go live, as I said, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome to the MLM Solution Podcast Show, where you'll learn the facts and hear the truth about the network marketing industry. Here's your host, Rob Cootie and Marie Cannon. Good morning, Miss Marie. Your name is still in the lights. <laughs> awesome. So that means I still have a job. That's good to know. <laughs> Happy Monday to you. Hey, guess what? It is the first Monday of summer officially. Oh my gosh. Did you I know did that? Really, I did not realize summer that. Summer awesome. officially started yesterday. So like everything happened yesterday. It was Father's Day. It was the first day of summer. Wow. It was a good friend of mine's birthday. Yeah. So, and for the first time, the wife, after 14 years, told me she loved me. So, <gasps> man, it was a special day. <laughs> wow. What did you do to get that? <laughs> I don't know if she can hear me. <laughs> oh, she, she hear her. She said, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to be in the doghouse later. <laughs> <so. Yeah. laughs> All right. Well, I had a good weekend. Hopefully you had a good week. Did you have a safe weekend? You look like you did. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not all about the safe, but I had a great weekend. Okay, Thank you very much. I agree with you. As, as yes, I know you. You are an adventurous person, no doubt. All right. With that being said, guys, as we go along, please give us a thumbs up if you like what you hear and you understand the points we're making. You can see how they can help you. That immediate feedback lets us know that we're hitting the nail on the head with the subject matter. It also helps us beat the algorithm. Really work with the algorithm because the algorithm rewards comments, thumbs ups, likes, all of that stuff. And you can help us with that by simply hitting a button, whether that is a thumbs up, comment, like, whatever. All right. With that being said, when you're at our social media platforms, please hit the share button, the like button and comment. And uh, when you do, once again, you help us with the algorithms. And if you're on our YouTube channel, where we stream live Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and our Facebook page, of course. You know, on the uh, YouTube channel, you have a little bell. You have to hit that little bell twice. That's two times. 
to get notified when we upload content or go live. That way you're automatically notified when we're starting our show. All right, Miss Marine, with that being said, uh, we'll talk about our products and stuff here a little bit later. As you know, we want people to know what we bring to the table for them. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, um, I, need, I need to go off script here for just okay. one second. All right. So somebody made a statement to me this past weekend that life is a zero sum game. Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. There's only so many marbles available for people to have type of thing. And some people have a bunch of them and some people have none. There's no such thing as a win-win. And I didn't agree with that perspective no, at all. No. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And what you just talked about, the, the like, comment, share, our videos, our podcasts, those types of things, to me, in my mind, that is a total win-win. There's yes. no cost to anyone. We're paying the cost, actually, right? We're spending our time. We're sharing our knowledge. That's right. So the folks that are listening to the podcast or watching the video, this is a total win-win for you. You are seen as a mentor, somebody who's looking to help other people by sharing the information. That's right. The person who receives that information is actually getting something valuable that can help them in their business or at least set them on the right path. Yeah to get the business on the right track. So to me, that's that's just a perfect example of an absolute win-win. So this, this zero sum game, non nonsense, absolute nonsense. nonsense. You know, people come up with the craziest stuff and you're absolutely right. Look, it's not to take your side because we're friends. We do a show together. You know, facts are facts. You're absolutely right. When I was in uh, active in real estate, I did essentially the same thing. I told people, especially people that were in tough financial situations, I said, look, I'm not here to take advantage of you. You want to make money and I want to save money. I said, there's somewhere in between where we can meet. Now, whether we do or not, we'll find out. But I'm willing for you to walk away making money on this deal as long as I save money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How's that not a win-win? I, I laid a win-win right there on the table. Okay. And I put that responsibility right back in their lap. That way they could not walk away saying, well, he's a money hungry fool. No, I laid it out. I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to take it's a cut in uh, profits to help you make money. And so, you know what? We seldom did that not work. And uh, right now I'm in a ne negotiation with a car and it's the same thing. Somebody wants to buy one of my cars and guess what? Uh, we're working where we can come to a compromise where they're saving money and I'm making money. So once again, another example of how win-win works. I agree with you hundred percent. I think yep. with that zero sum bull crap, you know what? They're probably some uh, overeducated idiot that's a liberal <laughs> living in a, in a democratic state. How's that? Or, or to me, it's just <laughs> it's just coming from somebody that that's a little bit of a negative perspective, right? Like a Democrat. They've, they've a been burned in life, unfortunately, but not the way it works. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Back to our regularly scheduled <laughs> yeah, program. There you go. Well, I'm glad you had the soapbox. That's what this show's about, especially our freelance Fridays. There's not a there's no reason not to take a moment to talk about things like that. So I'm glad you had a good weekend. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you had a moment in the sun right there. And uh, I appreciate your input and your viewpoints on things like that. And you know what? Those are important points that you need to bring up. And I'm glad you did. So with that being said, it's one of the reasons I love having you on the show. All right. So tomorrow, tomorrow's subject, just so you know, before we get started, others helping others. Well, that's a short and to the point. You couldn't say it any better. Any better. That's what network marketing is about, others helping others. But it goes much deeper than just that title, others helping others. Think about it, and we'll talk about it in great detail tomorrow, and I think you'll go, oh, my gosh, I never thought of it that way. All right, with that being said, Miss Marie, are you ready to get our show started? Podcast number 202, we're quickly racing to that magical 300, and I'm looking <laughs> so forward to that. <laughs> I am ready. Let's roll. <laughs> That's right. All right. So today's podcast is addressing an important subject. It's one of these golden, uh, golden nugget moments. And uh, you guys might have to replay this uh, podcast, rewind it, whatever, and make sure you take notes because you're going to learn some important information that has a direct impact on your business. It's either going to be positive or negative, like anything in life. I always say it, the yin and the yang. It's, go, it, it's just life. It's the way it is. For every new birth, there's a new death. Okay. I mean, that's the way life works, unfortunately. So with that being said, every time a network marketing company sets new goals, quarterly goals, okay, and yes, the, and you know what, Miss Marie, we say quarterly, but 
when companies sit down, they do have quarterly goals. Hey, by the end of this quarter, we want to have this much growth. We want to go into this country. I don't care if you're selling steel. I don't care if you're selling cars or toothpicks, tiddlywinks, whatever. If you want to grow as a company, you have to find new venues uh, to get your product in front of. And it's no different with a network marketing company. And so when a network marketing company that's relatively new or is new, just opening its doors, they have already on paper because Miss Marine, they don't get funding if they don't have a three year to five year growth plan. Did you know that? I was aware of that. Yes. Okay. When they go to the money angels, whatever you want to call them, investors, whatever, uh, here's the thing. They want a three to five year comprehensive uh, business plan, Miss Marie, that addresses just about every issue. And uh, they don't expect to be 100% spot on. And a lot of people hire, there's uh, lawyers that specialize in putting these business plans together. And uh, they want to, you to, to address the most common issues, how you're gonna overcome them, wh what your experience in that area is. And so that when they read that business plan, before they lay down their hard earned money, they say, okay, these guys really know what they're doing. You know, they have the connections, they have the experience, they have the knowledge, they, they have the tools to overcome these challenges. I feel comfortable putting in, you know, a million dollars, whatever. So uh, when a company gets funded, you can pretty much rest assured that they already have their first year laid out, you know, their first four quarters. And, you know, Miss Marie, some, some companies, and it's always kind of aggravated me, but I, I think it's based on industry. I'm not going to act like an expert. Some companies do their quarters in threes. You know that, right? And some do it in fours. Did you know that? They do their quarters in threes? Wouldn't that be thirds? It is thirds. <laughs> it is. But some of them don't want to wait until the, the fourth month. If they got a problem, they want to get on top of it now. So uh -huh. they'll do, yes. Gotcha. Okay, like, Right. If you start seeing financial warning signs in your own personal finances in January, you don't wait until March. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> You're back to the corner. Well, you know a, typ a typical business, of course, most businesses from a financial standpoint, they do what's called a month end close, right? They do their month end reporting so they can see the income and the outgo and all those that's types right. of things. So there is a valuation being done on a monthly basis. That's right. And that's, and that's just a typical kind of timeline dynamic in a company. There's the monthly, the quarterly, the annual, the biannual. I mean, it just depends on how far out they're projecting. Right. I don't know too many businesses that try to project past five to 10 years. Um, but but definitely as they're reviewing results coming in, they're looking at things monthly for sure. Oh, and some of the younger companies, they're even looking down to the weekly because it's, right. it's that new and they need that feedback that much quicker. That's right. There it is. Well, that's a great insight. And, uh, and, and it's a wonderful uh, segue into what we're going to be talking about here in a moment. And guys, what she's talking about is absolutely right. Whether you're a networking company, it doesn't matter. Networking companies are businesses. So they're going to do the same things that traditional businesses do. And I hate using the word traditional because network marketing companies are companies just like any other company. Okay. And they're going to do quarterly goals, but they're going to do exactly what she's saying. Sometimes, especially in a new company, they will monitor everything on a weekly basis, but they're going to see what is the hottest product. What's, you know, what to focus on when they're doing their conference calls, what to promote, what kind of brochures to create to promote that product, whatever that hot product is. And of course, they're going to monitor the problems too. What is our hottest uh, issue when they call customer service? They're going to look at the yin and the yang, the good and the bad. Now, when they're going along, guys, their monthly, well, in the beginning, usually weekly, leads to their monthly goals and the monthly goals lead to the quarterly goals. And she's right. They'll do biannual. Why? Because there are certain patterns that develop over a monthly uh, uh, timetable, a uh, bi-monthly timetable, a quarterly timetable, and a bi-annual uh, uh, or every six months, what do you want to call it? Okay, you can look over the past six months and you'll see a totally different trend than you would on a monthly basis That because that trend on a monthly basis may look small, but over a month, a six-month basis, it may be this big. You're like, oh, crap. Okay, the six month is going to reveal things that typically you're not going to see because you're focused on the quarterly goals. Now, why is the quarterly goal so important? When companies sit down and put down their quarterly goals, they do, in fact, Miss Marie, break it down to monthly goals. They say, if we want to make $15 million in our first quarter, we need to know how much we need to make, Miss Marie. And they'll go down literally to the day. You know, 
when I'm doing uh, online marketing, you know, with my other products, Miss Marie, if I want to make X amount per month, you know what I do? I break it down to how many sales I need a day in per hour, believe it or not. And of course, it gets down to where you're doing one or two sales per hour, and it will help you get X amount per month. And then you can do your quarterly projections. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So guys, you know, companies, you break down, you re, you reverse engineer the numbers so you know what you're, whether it's realistic or not. And you know how much you have to sell on a daily basis in order to reach or have a chance to reach your quarterly goals. Well, guess what? If the company has quarterly goals, you are a business owner. We've said that many times. And if you don't believe us, guess what? At the end of the year, don't file any taxes. If you make $30,000 in your network marketing company and you don't file taxes, go ahead. Don't file them. See what happens. <laughs> You'll get a knock on the door. <laughs> Where is your tax return for your business? Okay. And it better have the business name on it. Right, Miss Marie? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. So the IRS is recognizing your network marketing business as a business, a legit business. It wants its money. Okay. <laughs> so if it's a legit business, guess what? You need to recognize it as what? A legit business. Why do I say that? Because you need to have what? Quarterly goals. All right. Now, the good thing is, Miss Marie, in network marketing, you don't have to worry about daily goals of sales because guess what? What are you doing? You're prospecting. Your goal is to do what? To sign new people up. Okay. Instead of saying, well, I sold two XYZs today, you say, I signed up two new people. And when those two new people come on board, guess what? They're getting a starter kit. All right. Right. And they're creating volume. Right, Miss Marie? And they're doing the 100 PV. Right. Okay. Exactly. So you had a sale. Believe it or not, when you sign somebody up, that is a sale. All right. And the company's going to look at it as a sale when they do their, um, uh, when they have their uh, accountant do their uh, uh, P&L, it is going to be in the sales column. Okay. Because that's what they did. They moved product. They sold product to somebody. You may call it something else like the threshold of profitability. So the thing is, is that you have to realize that when someone gets on the threshold of profitability, which is the 100 PV per month, you are in fact making a sale meaning that you are going to be a part of the company's growth, right, Miss Marie? Because the company has a goal of selling X amount per day so they can reach their $15 million quarterly goal, okay? So they know they have to have X amount of uh, kits and sales going in product moving on a daily basis in order to reach that goal. You, by signing new people up, are helping the company. You're driving the sales of the company. Always remember the Richard Call story which is what? He almost put new skin out of business. Why? He was creating so much volume by signing up new people that those new people were buying product and new skin was scrambling to keep up. Okay. He almost put them out of business. What did that do? Richard Call was actually in this instance growing faster than the company in new skin itself. They were the ones scrambling to keep up with him. Okay. In this instance, more times than not, you're going to be the person that's going to be scrambling to keep up with the company. Okay. Right, Miss Marie? Yeah. Typically, the company's going to have their production and stuff ramped up to a level that you're not going to be able to beat. But if you find yourself in a Richard Call situation where you're actually bringing in that much business and moving that much product, your company is going to love you. That's right. <laughs> or hate you. <laughs> it could go either way. But, but uh, here's the thing, guys. You have to, the whole reason that we bring up Rich Call in these examples, you have to be part of the reason that the company will reach its quarterly goals. All right. So you say, okay, the topic of today's show is MLM company growth cycles and their impact on your business. So if the company has a, uh, an aggressive uh, goal of $15 million in their first quarter, which is an aggressive goal for a new company, how does that impact your business? Guys, if you are doing a richer call, if you are putting down in 90 days, I'm going to sign up 60 people, okay? Or if you say uh, in 90 days, I'm going to sign up 120 people, you are doing a richer call moment. You are creating so much volume that the new company that you have joined may in fact be scrambling without telling you to keep up with not only your volume that you're creating by signing up these 120 people in 90 days, 
but by the uh, your whole organization and what they're doing. Okay, now, the reason I say that, what kind of impact is that going to have on your business? Well, if you're that aggressive with a new company, signing 120 people up in 90 days, guys, you are riding the growth curve of that company. Because the company, Miss Marie, as we talked about in previous episodes, they are going to go out and hire what? Uh, uh, what we call um, professional business builders. But they're going to uh, hire, uh, what do you call them? You know, in the old Western days, they hired killers, you know, hired guns, they call them. And and that's essentially what they're doing here, not killers, but you know, <laughs> that was a bad example. <laughs> All right. So let's use another example. They're going out and hiring people that are professionals at building and network marketing organization. Okay. That's what they do. And so you know that this new company has someone else outside of Miss Marie who says, I'm going to sponsor 120 people in 90 days. I've been a part of this business before and I know what I have a hold of. I know how to make this thing go. 120 people is an aggressive thing, but I know I can do it. And she goes out there, man, and she's going after it. But she also knows in the back of her mind that somebody has been, or one or two people, if they're smart, has been hired to build a fast organization, a big, fast organization. Right, Miss Marie? Mm-hmm. That's, that's how this company stays in business. That first quarter is critical to their success, their longevity. They have to get off the ground. Thus, what did they do? They set quarterly goals. Hmm, what did we tell you? Set 90-day goals. Why? Because your 90-day goals are going to ride right along with the company's goals. Why is that important? The company is going to say, we want $15 million. As a new company coming out of the gate, we want to reach $15 million in the first quarter. That is an aggressive goal. All right, here's the thing. They may not make it to $15 million. They may actually go past it, but they're going to stretch themselves. And what do we tell them all the time, Miss Marie? Use the 90-day go sheets, what? To stretch yourself, right? Why? Because you want to ride the cycle, the growth cycle of the company, okay? And you are going to make that happen if you are going to do, or if you have the same mindset and take the same attitude with your new uh, organizational, well, yeah, I guess you call it organizational business building process uh, when you join this new company. Okay. And you said 120 people in 90 days. Well, that's the same thing as saying with the company saying we're going to do $15 million in our first quarter. Okay. And your goal is to get out there and just rock that thing because the company, when you grow and you force that, the bonuses and money that you're going to make is going to be astronomical. Miss Marie, this happens with almost every new company, Miss Marie. There are incredible uh, money making stories that come out of them. There are these stories where people go from zero to $100,000 in the first <clears throat> four, five, six months. Why? Because you're going to have one or two people. We've said it all the time. There's 1% that are going to have a legitimate chance of being in a legacy position, right, Miss Marie? And when you join a new company and that new company's skyrocketing, there's a ton of money to be made. And guess what, Miss Marie? Somebody's making that money besides a company, right? Well, exactly. And that's where the um, finances come down through the distributor base as you're building. So if you're one of the first distributors within the company and you start building your organization, you go after it hard. You use that 90 day goal sheet. You make a goal to bring in, you know, 60 um, teammates to help build businesses as well. You're helping push the growth of that company. And as the company experiences that growth, it gets more publicity, more popularity, more people start to hear about it, more people get interested. And oh, look, lo and behold, you have a team already equipped to go out and introduce it to people and bring more people in as business builders. So you continue to grow. So that's not to say coming into a company later prevents you from making money. But if you're talking about really the that legacy wealth building, the big money, if you're in in the initial months of that company's growth and you're building your business, that's the key there. You're taking the action, doing the correct, you know, consistent and correct business building activities and building your business. You will grow along with that company. Now you could join the company just as it's starting to get off the ground. And if you choose to do nothing, well, that's not going to do anything for your pocketbook because you're not building your business. 
I mean, you may have the, you know, distinction of saying, oh, I joined the company, you know, the first month it opened. Well, that's great. But, you know, what does your checking account show? It shows that you didn't do a lot of activity. It's if you're doing those consistent and correct business mm. building activities and you're taking advantage of the momentum yeah. that the company mm. itself is creating and you're following along with speed and urgency and building your team and bringing in more business builders, that's that can set you up for that. What Rob likes to call, call that coconut sipping money. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking out of the coconut money. That's, that's right. right. Um, guys, here's here's an example. New skin, let's see, new skin's going like this. Richard Call was above. New skin was trying to keep up with Richard Call. He was creating this much volume, and new skin was scrambling to produce the product to keep up with what he was creating. Okay. You can see how, in, in my uh, rude example here, and for all of you on the podcast, I'm using my hands, <laughs> you can see where Richard Call's uh, growth cycle was above new skins and so as they were going up together uh you had a situation where uh richard call was mirroring pretty much miss marie the growth that new skin was going through and the money that he made let's be honest miss marie with every new company there are legacy positions available somebody's going to fill those uh legacy positions those people the professional business builders realize that that's the reason why they take massive, not little action. They take massive action. They dedicate every ounce of their soul to the business building process because they know that they could be with a, in a special situation two, three years down the road. In other words, Miss Maria, a legacy position. Okay. Now, uh, at the very worst, they're going to end up in a legendary position, which is different, meaning that they're a legend in their own. Uh, maybe in the company and in their own organization because of the amazing things they've done. A legacy position means they're making, you know, 500,000, 600,000 or more per month. And as long as the company's around, that is a legacy position. All right. And every new company has them. It's a matter whether they have two or they're going to have 10 or 12. Nobody knows because nobody knows how big that company's going to get. All right. But the thing is, somebody's going to fill those legacy positions, even if it's two, right, Miss Marie? Mm -hmm. So you have nothing to lose by taking that massive action and being aggressive and what? Trying to keep up with the company growth. Okay, so that's the positive impact that it, that it can have on uh, your business. You saying, oh my gosh, they're going after 15 men. I need to get my button gear. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to put down aggressive 90 day goals because I want to be right there with the company. Your goals on that 90 day goal sheet is will mirror if you're going to stretch yourself. OK, you, it will mirror what the company's trying to do. Guys, that's powerful. That is one of the greatest, most powerful things we could teach you that we don't talk about a lot. It's one of those hidden gems. Right, Miss Marie? Having aggressive 90 day goals will put you in an amazing position as long as you're doing what Miss Marie said, CCBBA. you got to do the CCBBA because <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. You can have an aggressive goal as all you want. But if you're not doing CCBBA, forget it. It's over. You might as well even start. Okay. It has to be consistent, correct business building activity. In other words, you, you can be, you could do the correct business building activity uh, two days out of the week. Well, guess what? You're not going to build up enough momentum to have any kind of impact at all. You're going to, you're not even going to be in the top 30 earners or the top 50 earners, okay? Because you're not creating enough momentum. You're not creating enough excitement. You're not creating enough volume, right, Miss Marie, to have any kind of impact. Yes, you're going to make money, no doubt about it, if you do that. If you do two days a week consistently, uh, you're going to end up being a grinder because it's going to take you two years to do what you could have done in 90 days, okay? Who wants to do that, all right? And and if you decide, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go after it. I'm going to be massive in action. I'm going to work six days a week. That's great. But if you're not doing those steps correctly, you're being consistent because you're doing six days a week. But guess what? You're not doing the steps correctly. You might as well not even do them at all. OK, because guess what? You're not going to get the results. Right, Miss Marie, because you're screwing them up and your downline is going to do the same thing. What? They're going to duplicate what you do, which means they're going to screw up what they're doing. OK, so you're going to be working three, four or five times as hard as Miss Marie, who's doing things correctly because she's doing this CCBBA. And so she's making more money, getting more bonuses, and she's working less. 
Okay. And you're like, what is going on? All right. So put your ego aside and do what? The CCBBA have aggressive 90 day goals and go after it. Make it happen. And don't worry about the company's growth. If you do those two things, right, Miss Marie? Set down aggressive uh, 90 day goals and do CCBBA. If you do those two things, Miss Marie, you're on your way, right? Absolutely. And, and no matter what the company's growth cycle or growth stage is, you want to kick off your business with that speed and urgency and that 90 day mini blast right. every time. Every time. Every time. That's right. Good point. Great point. <clears throat> so let's talk about the negative side. You, you joined a new company. They said aggressive uh, quarterly goals. They're going to, Miss Marie. I don't know a single company that has made it that has not had aggressive goals. They know coming out of the gate that it's absolutely imperative that they have goals that are going to stretch them. And so the thing is that uh, they're going to go after it. And if you, you come in sucking your thumb saying, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And you do CCBBA, but you're doing it half as, you know, you do two days this week, three days next week, you know, I'll get around to it. You know, one day or one week, you might do five days out of the week. And next day you go back down to, uh, you know what? Here's the thing. You're, you're wasting your time. You are going to make money. But if you have uh, images of grandeur in your mind and that you're going to ride the growth of this company to incredible heights, as Miss Marie said at the beginning of the show, uh, you, you're fooling yourself because your activity has to match the activity of the company, meaning you're going to have to take massive action. Rob, what does massive action mean? It means something different for everybody. You know what? Here's the thing. Some people can put in four hours a day and get eight hours in return. Some people can put in four hours a day and get one hour in return. Right, Miss Marie? <clears throat> because of the learning curve, uh, because of their shyness, because of all kinds of personal traits that they may have to overcome, there's a learning curve, right? And so you can't, once again, we did an episode uh, recently, Miss Marie, don't compare yourself to your peers, didn't we? For that reason. Yeah, you have to focus on your own business, your own strengths, and growing yourself. You can't That's right. you can't be paying attention to what other people are doing because you are not those other people. They may be gifted differently. Their background, their education may bring them in at a, an entirely different level than you're coming in. That's right. So when you get into those comparison games, it just ends up sidetracking you and hurting your business. So That's don't right. do and it. Hurting your ego. That's right. You can't do that. If Miss Marie and I were to join a new company today and she skyrocketed right past me, I'd be pissed off like a like a badger. <laughs> I had to say that. I'm kidding. <laughs> You'd be so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but no, no. I would I would be embarrassed to be honest with you, not because she's a woman, not because she's Marie, not because of they need of that, because I'd be like, crap, I can't be showing up because I'm competitive. I'm like, you know, no, no, no. You know, it would be a friendly thing between her and I. We would probably wager 50 cents, to be honest with you, <laughs> on who would end up 90 days in a better spot. OK, and we would make it fun. All right. But we would go after it aggressively because we know what's at stake. We know, guys, you have to realize that if you're willing to put in a massive effort, not at the expense of losing your family or losing your job. We've talked about that. That's not what we're saying. When we're using the word massive, massive, I just said it. Massive to some people can be four hours a day and so for some people too. And as we tell you, make that the best four hours you ever had. How do you do that? Consistent, correct business building activity. The CCBBA, put that on your wall, put that on your mirror, put it on your refrigerator. CCBBA every time, every time, every time. Don't compromise. If you do, good duplication won't take place. You want to assemble a team of people that will do what? CCBBA. That's what you're doing. All right. You're assembling a team of leaders that will take correct, uh, consistent, correct business building activity. That's all you're doing. Everything else falls under that CCBBA, right, Ms. Marie? The threshold of profitability, the music to the ears, all of that falls under what? CCBBA. You can't do the five simple steps without doing CCBBA, right, Ms. Marie? There's no Absolutely. way. Yeah. You can try and cheat the music to the ears prospecting message and you're going to end up screwing up the CCBBA. And you're going to say, wow, my recruiting dropped way off. I'm not getting the same quality people. Matter of fact, I'm not even signing up as many people as I used to. Why? Uh, duh. Okay, you changed something in the music to the ears message. Okay, that's not correct. This is building activity. That's just one example. <clears throat> so 
if Miss Marie and I joined a new company, we took off the same time and I wasn't getting the results. What am I going to do? I'm going to do an evaluation of myself. I'm good at that. And I'm honest with myself, brutally honest with myself. And I would say, Rob, you're not doing CCBBA because everything we teach you, the five simple steps, all fund falls under CCBBA. It's the only way you can guarantee good duplication, right, Miss Marie? Which we talked about. Absolutely. Yep. And, and like we always talk about, you know, people, people will duplicate half the good that you're doing and somehow they manage to double the duplication of the bad that you're doing. <laughs> That's right. And I love it when you say that. It's so true, though. It's so true. You're like, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's the reason why we teach you and preach on CCBBA, guys. Do that. All right. So with that being said, guys, you can see uh, you have the yin and the yang going on here, just like anything else. And you can have a negative impact on your business if you do not use CCBBA when you join a new company and ride the growth curve of that new company and realize that those moments that pass each and every day in that new company are moments you'll never get back, money that you'll never be able to reclaim in uh, a part of your life that you will either look back on with a smile on your face or with a regret in your heart. It's gonna be one of those two things. And if you take massive action, and massive action means whatever you can afford to give in effort and time without losing your job or your family, all right, without losing your health or ruining your health, give as much time as you can and be consistent in doing the correct business building activity. And I'm telling you, Miss Marie, as we close, if you do CCBBA, guys, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to find some hidden gems in your recruiting process. And sooner than later, you're going to look back and you're going to say, thank God I sponsored that person. They are tearing it up. But it all starts with CCBBA. It all starts with putting down aggressive 90-day goals and putting in that original massive effort because you'll never get those moments back in that new company. You know, if you join it, it's a six month mark. Guess what? That is a new, still a new company to you. And it's still those moments. It's still in phase one growth. There's still wealth out there. There's still legacy positions possibly out there. You cannot, as Miss Marie said earlier, you cannot look at it any differently. Miss Marie, I would say up to about 14 months, you could probably get away with it uh, with that same attitude. After 14 months, I would say you're looking at mid phase one growth and uh, the opportunity has changed. So if you catch a new company, guys, it's imperative you take massive action. Right, Miss Marie? Absolutely. Right. I, I can't I can't stress the action point enough. You know, yeah, we, we talk we talk a lot about theory and understanding things, but when it all comes down to it, you have to take the action. You have to go out and make it happen. You have to implement what you're learning. It's not just education and understanding, which is important, but it's actually going out and acting and doing. That's right. Absolutely. All right, Miss Marie, I think we've done a great job covering this subject today. Let's uh, quickly bring this to a close. Guys, if you want to hear this podcast or any other podcast over again, just go to our website and you can see a link at the top that says podcast replay. Click that. Go there. you got a free gift. Fill out the form to get that free gift. There's no shenanigans. You're just going to get a link to that free gift. All right. And they will have the full week's uh, replay of our podcast on that page. Additionally, what not to do with network marketing, one of our keystone, cornerstone, whatever you want to call it, products. Been around a long time. It's actually famous or infamous, however you want to, whatever term you want to use, will apply. 146 paragraphs, 146 audio files combined with many training videos. This information is not available anyplace else. It's unlike anything else, and it will help you become a focused business building machine capable of achieving amazing results in a relatively short period of time. Who would not want to do that? And let me ask you, who doesn't like saving money? As you can see here for the next 24 hours, you're going to have an instant savings of $150. And yeah, guess what? You're going to get bonuses included in your purchase, which is even a more amazing uh, savings for you because those uh, bonuses are going to save you money uh, in the future as well on some outstanding things coming down the road. So for the next 24 hours, you can get this amazing package for uh, only $47. It's normally $197, and yes, people have bought it uh, for that price. And finally, I need leads now. 
beta.net slash 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 <laughs> slash beta. <laughs> Once again, I need leads now.net slash beta. Go there, fill out the form. Once again, no shenanigans. You're going to get the I need leads now ebook, which is going to cover uh, leads in a great uh, way where your understanding of leads, the quality of leads, why you need certain leads, how they have an impact in your business. All that's going to be discussed in this amazing eye opening and very insightful ebook. Once again, when you fill out the form, there's going to be no shenanigans. You're just going to get a link to the ebook. But you're more important. You fill out that form, you're going to get put on the beta testers uh, registration list. Okay, it doesn't guarantee that you'll become a beta tester. What it does puts you in the ball game. All right, all right, Miss Marie. I think we did well. It's time for us to get off of here. You have anything to say as we part? Nope. I'm looking forward to our topic tomorrow. Others helping others. So be sure to join us 11 a.m. Eastern right here. Facebook, YouTube, your favorite podcast, whatever it may be. Another great topic. And uh, we'll see you manana. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's podcast. Download our podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes and other podcast platforms visit our website at www.themlmsolution.net for additional important information, show details, and past shows. Follow us on Parler, Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, or the get notified button while visiting our other social media platforms.